This video is about testing best practices. And more specifically, it's five tips that I think give you the best bang for the buck for improving your test suite. Now this video is not going to discuss test speed because I did a video about that already. This is gonna focus more on maintainability and readability. Let's get started. The first tip is to be aware of and to follow the four phase test pattern. Now this is not the only way to write tests, but it's my preferred way. And I think by establishing this convention, you make your tests easier to read and maintain. So these are the four phases written out right here. Setup involves getting your fixtures and data ready. Exercise is where you execute the code that's under test. Verify is where you confirm that it worked correctly. And teardown is cleanup. Now teardown in Ruby with RSpec is typically handled by the language itself. So Ruby garbage collects and uh, RSpec or your test framework will reset your database. So typically you only see the first three phases in tests in Ruby. So let's map these phases in the test below. As you can probably see, we have a setup here. This is, involves our creating our data. Here's our exercise and here's our verify. And the first thing I want you to notice is that I have a new line between each of these phases. And I think this actually makes a big difference in readability. I think it makes it a lot easier to scan the test and to figure out where the part that you're interested in is located. By deleting those two lines, even though it's a small change, I'd argue this is substantially harder to follow and requires you to read much more of the test to find the line you care about. So I think it's really helpful to keep this pattern in mind and to follow it whenever possible. It's also worth asking yourself if you're having trouble following it, why might that be? One specific example I've seen come up in real world use is when you want to do a thing and then verify and then do another thing and verify. Sometimes it's tempting to write a test like this, where after you've done a verification step, you wanna do then more execution and more verification. This urge I think pops up a lot in feature specs. When I'm tempted to do this, I find that it usually indicates that I wanna just make a new scenario. Something like this. Notice that we're still testing the behavior we want to test, which is the deletion, but we are still following the four phase pattern. Although this is an improvement over shoving this test case in the one above, I would actually prefer to get rid of this export CSV line and move it to the setup somehow. Maybe something like this. In this case, because I need a CSV in order to test deleting it, I'm happy to create it during my setup phase. Whereas above, creating the CSV is actually part of the execution. That's what I want to test. And so I leave it in the execution phase. So tip number one, follow the four phase test pattern and separate each phase in your tests by a new line. Let's go to the second tip. Tip number two is to make sure that your test errors are clear. This is an opportunity you get, particularly if you are practicing TDD, because you're always going to see your tests fail. And so my tip for you is to watch what that error message is and see if there's a way to improve it if it's not super obvious what the failure is. Let's look at a specific example. Let's pretend I just finished writing the spec. I am doing TDD for the most recent method on user. And the test I want, I'm writing is that I want it to return users with newest first. So it's sorted in order. I create several users, I call my method, and then I assert that the users show up in order. So let's pop open user. So you can see right now the most recent method is empty. When I run this test, I'm going to get back nil. You can see here I expected a list of users and I got nil. So let's take a crack at making this test pass. I just want to return all the users sorted by the created at date. Okay, running this test, it's clear I haven't made a pass, but is it obvious why it's failing? You could argue no. I would argue no. Take a look at how much noise there is in this test output. Now, the issue here is that I've gotten the direction wrong. So I don't want order created at ascending, I want it descending. But 
it's very obvious to me from this output that this test error could be improved. There's got to be 100 lines of test output right here. Now, it would be very natural for you to just say, oh, I flipped the direction of the sort. Let me go fix it over here. We'll change this ascending to descending, and the test will pass, and I'll move on to the next task. But there's actually a nice opportunity here, which is to recognize that this test is failing in an unclear way, and we, should, we can and we should improve that error before we move on. This is worth doing because later, someone else's change might break this test, and it would be great if their output is better than what we just saw. This is one of those investments that don't quite pay off right away, but tend to pay off later on down the road. By the way, a quick aside, if we didn't care about the order of the array and we just wanted to make sure that all the users came back, we could use this handy matcher match array that RSpec gives us and our test would pass. This is an order independent match, but we care about the order, so we're using equals here. Okay, back to improving our error. The core issue to my eye is that we're comparing an array of three objects all of which are active record objects. So user.mostRecent gives us three users, and then this array here contains three users from our setup, and we're comparing them directly. And RSpec's output is showing just about all the details for each of those objects. The way I like to improve errors in this case looks like this. Now that, to me, is a pretty clear error. I expected newest, older, oldest. I got oldest, older, newest. This looks to me like a pretty clear error in my sort order. Because users have names in the system, this is one option, but you could also use something like IDs. I would argue this is not quite as clear, but is still pretty obvious at a quick glance. Naturally, we can fix this by changing the sort order, and we're green. So the core tip here is to pay attention to your test errors. Don't miss that opportunity to do a little refactoring of your spec to improve the clarity of the error that you get. It will tend to help you down the road if you later break that test, and sometimes you'll even find that clarifying the error message for your test improves the test itself. In particular, watch out when you are asserting arrays of objects are equal. Find something to map over and compare them. I find I use this technique a lot when I'm writing tests for query methods like we did right here. And yes, I almost certainly would come back and change this variable here to be something like IDs or names if that's what I were using. Let's look at our next example. Turns out it's this spec down here in the same file.